Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told out of Voice of Radio, so today we need to look at something pretty important, and that is all of the cards that are missing from Silver Tempest. Because there are actually quite a few cards that are missing from Silver Tempest. And I noticed this initially, I, I did my top 20 list, as I always do, for a new set. And I sat down and I, and I basically made a list of all the cards from the equivalent Japanese set that I was excited about. And then I made my top 20 list. And then I, I just did a little double check right before I started recording. And it turned out Luxray wasn't in our set. And I was expecting Luxray to be in our set. I thought Luxray was going to be in our set. Luxray is not in our set. Luxray should have been in Silver Tempest. It's not. When I say should have been in Silver Tempest, what I mean by that is that our Silver Tempest is an amalgamation of two Japanese sets, that being Sword and Shield 11A, Incandescent Arcana, and Sword and Shield 12, Paradigm Trigger. So in theory, all the cards from those two sets should be in our set. They're not. So what we're looking at here are the best cards from those sets that should have been in Silver Tempest, but aren't. To answer the next probably fairly obvious question, well, hang on a second, we'll see. If Silver Tempest is the last real Sword and Shield set, and the cards aren't in Silver Tempest, where are we getting these cards? Almost certainly Crown Zenith. I can't say for like absolute 100% certainty, but overwhelmingly likely to be in Crown Zenith, because that's like the only Sword and Shield set left. It's a special set, but it's still a set, and it's almost certainly going to be in there. Cool. So with all of that born in mind then, let's start off with Luxray, because I like this Luxray a lot. Like it to the point where I've got deck list scribbled down that had that card in, and now I can't play those decks because I don't have Luxray. Now, what Luxray does, Luxray is basically the old Talonflame. If you have it in your hand to begin the game, you can play it as your active Pokemon. Only as your active, that means if you start with two in your hand, you can only play one of them. And then for one colorless energy, 50 damage, search your deck for up to two trainer cards, reveal them and put them into your hand. It is great. It is brilliant in the early game. It's a phenomenal starter. Let's you search out trainer cards. Talonflame had 30 less HP, but did let you search for any cards, which is a bit of a difference. But it's also got free retreat, 160 HP, pseudo basic. This Luxray is really good, and it's gone, and that makes me very, very sad. Now, for me, that is the biggest one that we've lost. But there are a bunch of others. So let's have a quick flick through the other ones that unfortunately just aren't making their way in. So the Lycan Rock is pretty gosh darn cool. I will be honest with you, the Rockruff Okacheke artwork, absolutely love it. Gutted that isn't in the set. But the Lycan Rock for two energy does 240, minus 80 for each energy attached to your opponent's active. That is a huge amount of damage, either in an energy denial deck or as a cheeky card to go after Pokemon that haven't yet had energy attached to them. I like this very much indeed. Dragalgi is a nice interesting card. It for a single darkness energy. Poisons your opponent, that's not good. But if the Pokemon evolved from Skrelp during this turn, you put 8 damage counters on during Pokemon checkup for poison. That is a lot of poison and that will add up very, very fast. Agron is a stage 2 and I know that's kind of awkward and etc. But for free energy, you deal 90, meh. During your opponent's next turn, when this Pokemon receives damage from an attack, put damage counters equal to the damage taken onto the attacking Pokemon. Now, it's a little bit weird, this one, because you kind of got to get a stage two out and then sacrifice it to take a big KO. But you know what? Yeah. And your opponent can go around by just trying to KO bench Pokemon, etc. But for the time being, there are, there are going to be times this wins and that will be hilarious. But I do admit it's going to be probably few and far between. Probably too awkward to ever be really good. Now, Tauros, for free colorless energy, does a flat 180 as long as it's got some damage. It has to have some damage. If this Pokemon doesn't have any damage counters on, this attack does nothing. 
So you need to have at least one damage counter on. And then it's a basic Pokemon colorless energy. Really good for tech ability. Yeah. Could be fun. And Oranguru is a weird one. Single colorless energy on a basic Pokemon. So again, the teching is great. Select a supporter card in your opponent's discard pile. Use that card's effect as this attack. Okay. Cool. The problem is you're copying your opponent's supporter and there's no guarantee it's necessarily going to have the one you want. And it, it could get awkward, but it still could be an awful lot of fun. Now, those are the ones that were taken out of Paradigm Trigger. And although I think all of these are worth looking at, the Luxray is the big loss for me. But there were also a bunch of cards from Incandescent Arcana that we've gone and lost, including the first ever actual Calyrex card. Not Ice Rider or Shadow Rider. Just like ordinary, everyday, run-of-the-mill Calyrex, this was going to be the first ever Calyrex. And now we, we don't have a, a we don't have a Calyrex card in English yet. And it, it's not good. Uh, two energy, 30 damage, search your card, deck for any two cards. And look, searching for two cards is good, but only doing 30 damage and having to put two energy on is awkward. 90 damage, heal 20 from each of your Pokemon. It's not flat out terrible. I don't think it's great. But it was going to be the first ever Calyrex card. And then we don't have one. That's just sad. Now we're losing Entei. It's got uh, an ability whereby if it's got any fire energy attached, it has free retreat. Free colorless energy, 90 damage is fine. But the fact that it attacks for colorless energy while hitting a grass weakness, and the fact that it can give itself free retreat if you do have fire energy, that one is a little bit interesting. Speaking of interesting, we're missing Waylord. Now at this stage, some of you have probably gone, Wossy, 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 Wossy. We have a Waylord in Silver Tempest. Yes, we do. We should have had two. There should have been two Waylord. Now, the Waylord we got is a 200 HP. It takes 30 less from attacks. And it does 240 if it's got any special energy attached. The one we're missing has 220 HP. And it does 80 heal 30 or just a flat 180. So look, we got the good Waylord, okay? The Waylord we got is the superior Waylord. But who didn't want two Waylord in one set? Because I'm telling you now, I did want two Waylord in one set. Now, much less big than Waylord, we are missing the Love Disc. That's got a shuffle draw five. Shuffle your hand into your deck, draw five cards. And again, I'm, I'm not going to pretend this is some kind of like game-breaking attack. But as a single energy, and it is a water energy, which sucks. I like colorless here. But still, the fact that you can go and grab yourself an energy and then have a shuffle draw five, that is not to be sniffed at, ladies and gentlemen. That ain't too bad at all. Now, Kyogre is hideously expensive, but... Okay, fine, it's got an attack that lets you search your deck for water energy and attach it, but then you're leaving 140 HP Pokemon in the active to take a hit. That's not good. Four energy, return three to your hand, 180 snipe. 180 to one of your opponent's bench. And I completely understand, I get it, that actually four energy returning three of them is a lot, but 180 snipe is also a lot. This is one not to be slept on. Now, Executor is one that actually has a legit chance to be a great card in the right deck. For one psychic energy, it does 20 damage, for each energy attached to all of your Pokemon. So in any deck that plays a bunch of energy and can play at least one or two Psychic, Executor could come in as a really big sweeper to do really big damage. It is something to keep an eye on. That one could be kind of fun. If you want to punish your opponent for attaching too much energy though, well that's where Tapu Lele comes in. It, it's not the free energy 100 heal 30, nobody cares. But for two colorless energy, 20 damage for each energy attached to both active Pokemon. What's super interesting here, this is literally Tapu Lele GX's attack. Like, th th this is just Tapu Lele GX. With one very important difference. It does hit for weakness. Tapu Lele GX, remember, I'm using the Celebrations print because why not? Didn't use weakness or resistance this one does yeah 
That could legit be good. Especially if a psychic Pokemon attaches too much energy. Tapu Lele's got your back, ladies and gentlemen. Tapu Lele's got your back. And then finally, we've got Zamazenta. Now, I don't think Zamazenta's amazing. It does have 130 HP. And if it's got any energy attached, it takes 30 less damage from attacks. But for free energy, it does 120 if any of your Pokemon were knocked out by damage during your opponent's last turn. And I don't think this is amazing, but I do think in any deck playing Bronzong, I am talking about the Bronzong from Battle Styles that moves uh, metal energy around, bearing in mind that will survive the rotation and is going to be around for more than a year yet. Yeah. Move your energy over and smash. Bearing in mind, we've got Metal Sorcerer at the moment, though that one will not survive rotation. That will get rotated when we hit the rotation beginning of next year. But still, the fact that we can accelerate Metal Energy and move it over and get a big KO of a single prize Pokemon, and the theory here essentially is, your opponent takes a KO. This does 220, which is the magic number to KO Pokemon V. So you move your energy over, take a KO on a Pokemon V, and then you kind of force your opponent to deal with this and only take one prize. Not bad, ladies and gentlemen. Not too bad at all. Although I think it's specifically got to be in a Bronzong deck. I think if it's not in a Bronzong deck, something is going to go very wrong very quickly. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not claiming all of these are game-changing cards. But I am saying that the Lux Ray would legit have been moderately high up on my top 20 list in Silver Tempest. And all the rest here have a fair bit of potential. And none of them have ended up appearing in this set. And that, for me, is a pretty big deal. But I want to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section, would you? Go nuts! Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Pokemon and card games and Pokemon card games, all kinds of fun things. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel. You can get some bonus podcasts for answering all of your questions. You can join a Discord and chat with us. And you can get shoutouts on the channel like the lovely Javier Garcia, who has been a supporter of ours for a long time now and is a very lovely person. So thank you for all the support and thank you for being a very lovely person. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.